Right, quick video on a remote detonator kit that we can use in Airsoft for triggering fun things. So, might be uh, maybe about hoping for about 10 to 15 minutes, we'll see. Um, these parts are readily available on eBay or Amazon, a central locking solenoid. And you're going to need a these, are a, these are a little kit that we get. And that's got about 100 meter range. You get some hardware with the motor, which we're going to use. And we've got a battery. In this case, I'm using that one. Um, you can use a 13, 11 volt airsoft battery. Um, but for this, because it's just, I've got it lying around, I'm just going to use one from a model plane that I don't use anymore. And yeah, and this thing will be able to trigger this grenade from yeah anywhere 80 90 meters range dependent so yeah we're going to start with some preparation work and some soldering so a little bit of homework you need to look at the terminals on the back let's see if we can capture that there we are right normally closed common normally open and then we have our power going in. And these things are 12 volt. All right. So we're going to have our battery. Positive, negative. We're going to have our board with our positive, negative. And then we also have our common and our normally open. And we're going to use only those two. All right. What we're going to take is we're going to run the positives up, over, and join them together. And then we're going to, that'd be a motor, which technically it is. All right. You can use um, a connector here um, or a switch or whatever you want. Ideally, you could fuse it. And then from the negative, we're going to come out here and we're going to go into the common. But we're also going to go into the negative here. All right. And that's going to make sure that it's powered. And then from here, this is the switchable output. It's going to come over and into the motor to activate it. So that is your basic circuit. All right. So let's uh, wire it up. Okay. Right. So here's our lead that we made before. We need a certain length of that. All right, so following our circuit diagram that we had, we take the negative into the common and the negative of the board. So I developed one of these years ago for airsoft use, probably maybe about five years ago. And we used to use it in CQB for triggering um, little uh, BFGs and, uh, and so on. And they've proven to be very, very effective if you can filter the players. Uh, also quite good if you manage to get to the objective before they do and rig it. That's usually very annoying. Right, so that's going to go into the negative there. He says. in there and so 
what we're going to do is wire it up and then see which way the activator moves and then we'll just swap the wires over if needs be right so what you see here is the positive and negative coming into the board all right and then we have our this is our common output and that's going to go into the middle terminal there final one which will make the circuit when the button is pressed ideally you want to fuse these but unfortunately I do not have a fuse lying around so I have to make do and that is about it so if we're in the normal uh, we're in the normally closed say I've made a mistake normally closed if I'd have powered this up this would have come on, pulled or pushed, and carried on going. We want it in the normally open. Right then, that is our circuit. Let's have a little look at what it does. Catch fire, explode, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we got nothing there. So here's our remote. Doing absolutely nothing. I think it needs pairing. <laughs> yeah, so what we did, uh, there's a little switch there. And that is a pressed it, held it, and then it allows it to activate. So that's actually wired the right way. So we put it in, bang. Second switch does nothing, which is great. So A is the button of fun. So the next part, let's just disconnect that. What we're going to do is we're going to take this here and we're just going to take it, bend it round, right, and then loop it into the middle. Dead simple. Right, so just something like that. All right, and then try and straighten it up to go back on again, and that is going to go into there like that okay so we want it all the way out there and as far in as we can get it you can adjust it and play with it later oh right yeah the pin so, that will go through that, that goes through that, side it can be slightly on an angle there's no there's no uh, right or wrong way oh need the shells are screwed yeah 
so I had to jump around and try and find another screw for the job. Okay, right. So what you effectively have here is a remote pin puller. All right. So work out the average length that you need in order to pull that clean out. So it would be about there to there. something in there. I think just a small zip tie and we'll be done, done on that one. Alright then, let's see. Again, how you do this bit's up to you. I'm trying to remember what I did all this time ago on my last build. I mean, I might even put tape around that. Alright, so just looking for a quick way to do this, and I think we'll just go for the good old tape. We just want to stop it rattling around while we're running around. frame off again. Or slacken it off. Right, so what we want it to do is just pull the pin out. Let's see. Have to rotate that round a bit so it's on the bottom. There we are. Again, this is just a bodge, but. see that the throw isn't quite enough so we can take a little bit more off that. There we are. Right, so concept of operation. Your grenade will sit here and it will pull. Demonstrate. We have our grenade now. What you're going to do is keep the keep that pulled in, and then insert like so. Release the pin. However you want to do it. There we are. Keep holding your pin. Retreat to a nice safe distance.
And then...